right from an early age, I think I, I valued being on my own. My upbringing was one where I was allowed to, to play. I very seldom heard the word no, or you can't do that, or you can't do this. I don't think I made a decision, actually, you know, to be or, or not to be. It sounds like uh, Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. Making art basically is just play, and play is just being creative. Artists' whole practice is accumulative. Everything that you've done in the past finds itself in the work that you're doing now. I don't work just on one canvas or one work at a time. I, I work on multiple works and uh, I always ensure that ideas and concepts from one work bleed into the other. Like I've been making art for well over 30 years. My work kind of comments on what's going on at the very time. I look at maybe socio political things that are happening or do a picture according to how I'm witness events as they unfold right before me. I mean when you think of history it's continuous and it's never ending. It's present today, it actually affects us today. History is presented from a white male colonial perspective. My history is what Murrayland One is. English is our second language. Uh, we don't know our first because colonisation took our first language away from us. Therefore, I have a licence to use the English language any which way I like. That includes misspelling, making up my own words, playing with it, ripping the words apart and basically bastardising the Queen's English to our men, so we're reinventing this English language. We thought that these first white people that came to our shores were the ghost or the spirits of our ancestors that went out a long, long time ago, because within our tradition and our culture, our white ochre is generally associated with the spirit world and the skin was white, so naturally we thought that, which is why I used Casper the Friendly Ghost, because they appeared friendly. When Flinders gave the order for those blackfellas to be shot, you know, at Pummerstone Passage, Skirmish Point, they would have been shot with muskets and the lead balls. Those musket balls, they continue on, penetrating the other scenarios that I'm painting thereafter. And those lead balls will permeate and penetrate through Murrayland 2, 3 and 4 as well. What they are symbolising is that even though this event or this brutality happened back then, it has still manifested itself today. Those same lead balls that were fired back then are still hitting Aboriginal people today. There are so many things that have happened that I won't fit into this history that I'm painting. Even though it's a long and arduous process, it is actually not about production. It's not about getting the work finished as fast as I can. It's about the concepts and the process of working. It's about me engaging with the artwork. Me as the artist, feeling everything in the work that I'm doing. You could look through the visual diaries and you can see the actual working of getting to a particular artwork. One of the conceptual threads that goes through the whole painting is that of an ancestral spirit being called a rainbow serpent or mundigari or kabul. There's so many different names uh, within Aboriginal culture for this particular ancestral spirit being. I use it to connect the stories through time and 
and place and space. People think it's one rainbow, but in fact, it's two, one female and one is male, and they go up from each side, they meet in the center, and their meeting actually gives life to everything that is living. Like people will look at a work of art, you know, through the screens of their own socialization. The concept of Murray Land is taking uh, scenarios within the timeline of history that affects Aboriginal people in Queensland. At a point, I have to think about painting the last one and the concepts and idea that I have about painting the last one is one of imagining victory, uh, a painting that I would feel, you know, could be my last one.